The Curly Criterion is a simple and easy mathematical formula that can be used to determine the ideal level of stake to be used in a particular bet by working out the expected level of return you can require from the bet and then applying this to the better's bank. The Kelly Criterion does feature an element of complication. Although the concept may sound fairly straightforward, you need to be able to calculate the chances of any particular bet being successful. This is because one of the main effects of the Kelly Criterion is that the greater the expected possibility of the win, the higher the level of stake, which in turn leads to maximizing your return. What is the Kelly Criterion? In probability theory and intertemporal portfolio choice, the Kelly Criterion, also known as the scientific gambling method, is an optimal bet selection based on a perceived edge of a given event. But how does it work? To effectively utilize the formula, you need to incorporate the expected possibility of a bet winning. The primary purpose of the Kelly Criterion as a betting system or algorithm is to ensure that you stake higher sums when putting bets with a higher likelihood of winning and lower sums when setting bets that have a lower likelihood of winning. In principle, doing this could mean your general returns will be higher and losses lower. So it's hard to pinpoint the specific likelihood as it depends on a lot of variables. Basically, the Kelly Criterion doesn't work unless you can allocate probabilities with a solid accuracy. This is hard to do, but for the sake of demonstrating how the Kelly Criterion works, let's assume that you are able to assess the probability of a bet being successful with a solid degree of accuracy. Kelly Criterion formula might seem confusing to some, but once you break it down, it is easy to understand and apply to your own betting. F is the amount you should bet. B is the decimal odds on your prospective bet, minus 1. P is the probability of winning. And Q is the probability of losing. Here, B refers to the multiple of the available odds on the bet in question. For instance, if the decimal odds for a bet are 4.0, this means B is free. The letters P and Q donate to the likelihood of a bet being successful or losing. This means if a bet has a 55% probability of being successful, then P will be 0.55 and Q will be 0.45. Lastly, F is the answer to the equation and relates to the fraction of your total betting bank that you should use in this bet. If we then took this example of a bet where the decimal odds are 4.0 and the probability of the bet winning is 35%, we can apply the relevant figures to the equation as follows. Based on the Kelly criterion for this wager, despite the fact that the possibility of losing is higher than the possibility of winning, you should be staking 40% of your wagering bank. Another condition of the Kelly criterion is that it can communicate to you when a bet offers value. Value is a significant conception in sports betting. Basically, you have discovered a value bet when the possibility of it being viable is higher than the suggested possibility of the odds for that bet. If the decimal odds for a bet are 4.0, then the supposed possibility of that bet is 25% or 0.25. If you believe that the likelihood of the wager being effective is bigger than 25%, at that point you've recognized a positive EV. In the instance above, the reaction to the Kelly Criterion formula is a positive number. This communicates to you that you have perceived a bet with value. On the off chance that the response was a negative number, this will show that the wager didn't have a positive expected value, or EV. It's an important rule of betting that you should only place a bet when you feel there is a positive value expectancy. When it tosses up a negative number, the Kelly Criterion is communicating to you that you shouldn't bet. One advantage of the Kelly Criterion is that it aids a better to attack the correct balance between risk and safety and also between growing a betting bank and protecting it. By growing the size of a wager in proportion to the expected value, you are making the most of your edge. Furthermore, for the individuals who are fairly solid at ascertaining the likelihood of a wager being successful, the Kelly Criterion offers the best method to benefit from their aptitude. Another bit of leeway of the Kelly Criterion is that the framework is moderately simple to utilize. When you have completed the estimations a couple times, it gets comfortable. And in the event that you do require help, there are various free Kelly Criterion calculators on the web. This framework encourages you to spot wages that don't offer value. At the point when the equation hurls an answer with a negative number, you have a helpful warning not to wager. There are two primary burdens related to the Kelly criterion. The first is that it relies altogether upon your capacity to precisely and reliably work out the genuine probabilities of wages. 
On the off chance that your estimates are off base, at that point, utilizing the formula will prompt wrong stake size proposals and lead to a wasteful utilization of your wagering bank. The second disadvantage is that this framework is characteristically aggressive. It can result in the better utilizing huge portions of their wagering bank. In the example above, the formula proposed utilizing 40% of your wagering bank. This is a pretty high figure, given that the numerous effective bettors will rarely wager over 5% of their bank whenever. Therefore, it's normal for those utilizing this framework to half or quarter the proposed stake, so they can offer more protection for their betting bank. The Kelly criterion depends on strong mass. For those adept at calculating genuine probabilities, it offers a unique method of expanding and maximizing their rewards. It is imperative to remember, in any case, that the Kelly criterion is basically a marking framework. It won't distinguish potential bets and isn't a get-rich-quick scheme. It should be used with caution, especially by those new to sports betting. Well guys, that's the video for today. We hope we helped you get a better understanding of sports algorithms and why a combination of all the tools available would be the best way forward. If you have any suggestions, drop them down in the comments below. For any questions, you can hit us up on Twitter or send us an email. For more actionable sports advice, visit www.ghostbettingtips.com and all these links will be in the description. We hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you next time.